Hey guys, Han Meditations here, and I'm so excited to bring you guys a new meditation album. Entranced to Serenity, streaming now on all platforms. See you there. Hey guys, so our camera messed up. So if you're seeing it, it looks weird. If it looks like we're looking in all different directions, it's because our camera died. So I'm using my phone. So thankfully we have the setup where we're able to fix it. But, you know, just letting you guys know. So thank you for watching. Get a quarter. Buddhism. The chief problem in life is suffering and it is caused by desiring worldly things. Suffering can be eliminated by getting rid of material desires. This will help you realize nirvana, the state of bliss characterized by freedom from rebirths. Buddhas do not worship any god. Buddha was not a god, but a person who realized spiritual enlightenment and freedom from the cycle of birth and death. Most Buddhists believe a person has countless rebirths, which leads to suffering. To end these rebirths, the goal of a Buddhist is to purify one's heart and to let go of all yearning and sensual desires and material attachment. Through practice meditation, a person may reach nirvana, the ridding of desires and freedom from reincarnations. Christian Hinduism, the world is an illusion and the goal of humanity is to free the soul from constant rebirth and reincarnations and to be absorbed into the cosmic consciousness called Brahman. Central to Hindu belief is the concept of karma, where past deeds are responsible for present circumstances. If a person's behavior in the past or in a past life was evil, they might justifiably experience hardships in this life. Hindus believe that godly consciousness is present in everyone and everything. So if God is present in everything, then to a Hindu, worshiping an idol in the form of deities, gurus, rivers, or animals is equivalent. In its truest sense, Hinduism is monotheistic, but it is regarded by many as polytheistic because of the various representations of the one Brahman that Hindus might worship. Most Hindus agree that the root of their philosophy comes from a set of books called the Vedas, which translates to books of knowledge. Islam. Life is to be lived in subordination to God's will. Devotional life centers on the confession, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Allah is the sole and sovereign ruler of the universe and source of all good and evil. Everything that happens is Allah's will. Muhammad is considered the last prophet and his words and lifestyle are to be followed and emulated. To be a Muslim, one must follow five religious duties. One, repeat a creed about Allah and Muhammad. Two, recite certain prayers in Arabic five times a day. Three, give to the needy. Four, one month each year, fast from food, drink, sex, smoking, from sunrise to sunset. Pilgrimage once in your lifetime to worship at the shrine in Mecca in Saudi Arabia. At death, based on one's faithfulness to these duties, a Muslim hopes to enter paradise. If not, they will be eternally punished in hell. The scripture of Islam is called the Quran. God's word dictated to Muhammad over a period of 22 years. Judaism. There is a single God who not only created the universe, but who continues to rule it. Jews are the chosen people of God with whom he has a covenant to set an example of holiness and ethical behavior in the world. Judaism establishes a relationship between Israelites, the children of Israel, and God. Judaism says that death is not the end of the world and that a new world is yet to come into existence. The Ten Commandments are the basis for serving God and for relating to others. Jews also follow the Talmud, a collection of rabbinical interpretations of the Torah. Salvation comes by following God's will and fulfilling His commandments. Sabbath observance is the foundation of Jewish worship. The 24 hours from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday are designated as a time of worship and rest from work. Two major events in the 20th century have influenced the Jews. The Holocaust, the Nazis' destruction of millions of Jews, and Israel's reconstitution in 1948. The Torah or Old Testament, the five books of the Hebrew Bible, form the most important constituent. Hindus acknowledge the one Brahman who can manifest in multitudes of gods and goddesses. Buddhists say there is no deity. Muslims believe in a powerful but unknowable God. Christians believe in a loving God who created us to know him. Jews believe God continues to rule the world and has a covenant with them to keep his laws in the world in exchange for the good deeds he does. What do these religions have in common? They all require faith that its teachings and practices will result in everlasting happiness for the human soul. In that sense, all these five religions serve a common purpose 
and have a common goal in mind. So you have to ask the question, if every pilgrim is after the same result for the human soul, why do we all keep fighting on our way to get there? Wow, that's absolutely beautiful. And I believe that I, I, I always wonder that why are we always fighting each other? We should be coming together and just being as positive as possible, having a high vibration and teaching people as much as possible. Now, there's something from every religion that you can take advantage of and really just think about and ponder and take that with you. Now, the thing I like about Buddhists is they talk about attachment and Kelly knows a lot about Buddhists as well. And they believe that attachment to anything is going to be basically suffering. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so I took my favorite class I ever took, college, high school, whatever, was ancient Asian philosophy. So we definitely deep dived a lot in Buddhism, but other things such as Taoism, which is quite similar. Mm -hmm. But it was really interesting. It was just so fascinating. I really love learning about this kind of stuff because... Like the end of the video said, like Han said, I think it's fascinating to have these conversations and just learn more about other beliefs because there's truly something to learn from all of it. And I think it's a beautiful thing. And at the core, a lot of it really is the same things, maybe just different methods of reaching that thing. And we need to just all see each other with love. But regardless, yes, Buddhism's it's all about the attachment via emotions, via physical things that we're attached to in life that creates suffering and creates karma and all attachment creates suffering, which we need to. Yeah. So you should from. detach. And the best way to detach is by meditating is by just practicing detachment. And I actually have a Buddha statue over there, a little Buddha that I like <laughs> to look at whenever we're doing this meditation whenever we're doing the meditations and also putting out videos like this so christianity one of the favorite things i like about christianity is the process of forgiveness now and also turning the other cheek there's a lot of good tenets if you're actually truly following it now i don't like the eternal sin and all that but i do like the forgiveness and forgiving and that you are forgiven and can be forgiven no matter what and immediately because everybody needs to hear that and with hinduism I mean, the world is an illusion that just that starts off so powerful. It sounds so powerful. It sounds really awesome and cool. Whenever you just start to hear the world is an illusion and what they believe is to get to Brahman, which is essentially the perfection of the soul, where they're able to get back into the uh, essence of the universe and all that is and absorb that consciousness within you. And that's one of the best things that can ever happen. And we, of course, we've been learning so much about Brahman, about uh, Hinduism, about Vedanta, about different religions through different Swamis and uh, Swamiji. And it's just so nice to really start to understand. And whenever you hear different words like Brahman, you know what it means. Yeah. And it's just really cool to one of you start listening to it and, and learning more and you're like, yeah, I know what that means now. So it's not like because before, if I would have heard Brahman, I'd be like, what is that? Yeah, I'd be a little confused. That's something we've really been deep diving this year on this channel, learning a lot more about Hinduism, really fascinating way of thinking. And we've really grown to be fond of it and really like it. But I agree that with Christianity, forgiveness is absolutely huge. I think it's absolutely lifting of our hearts and our souls. And I like the aspect of Christianity, how the belief is there that you can be have a personal connection with God and grow a really close, loving relationship with God. And I definitely agree with that. Yeah. And whenever it comes to Islam, I believe that how they said that everything that happens is Allah's will, God's will. I absolutely believe that. So if you just believe and allow yourself to think that everything that happens, God wanted it to happen, then your life can be in such a magical and beautiful place you don't have to worry about anything anymore everything that happens is god's will so just relax just chill don't even worry about it everything that happens is god's will so i like to take just positive things from each religion and and go through them but yeah that that's one of the awesome ones and then judaism i like that they believe that they are the chosen people of god but i believe that everyone is the chosen people of God. I don't think God has favorites. Oh, these people in this place right here, these are my favorites. I don't believe that it works like that with God. That's my personal belief. If you feel that you are the chosen one and what that's, that's up to you. If that helps your frame of mind and then that's good. But I think that we can take something positive from every religion. Don't you Kelly? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would say out of the five, Judaism is what I know the least about. So I didn't know that that's what they believe, but that's quite interesting. However, the Ten Commandments is something I feel aligned with. And I think they're really good just principles to follow in your life. And I think following them overall will help you just be a better human in general. So I like that about that as well. And I totally agree that everything is God's will. So let it be. And every something good comes from everything, even if it's hard to see it that way. God is the best planner. Allah is the best planner. So let him plan it. Exactly. So thank you guys for watching. If you like these kind of videos, just like and subscribe. And we're going to be doing more videos on these topics. People seem to like this, so we'll continue to do it. As long as you guys are liking it. Thank you for watching. Thank you. See you in the next one. Hey guys, Han Meditations here, and I'm so excited to bring you guys a new meditation album. Entrance to Serenity, streaming now on all platforms. See you there.